Bonjour, bienvenue. Welcome to Chateau Belfond Versier. I'm Sarah and I'm a member of the Vignoble K boutique team or the tourism and hospitality team. And I'm so pleased that you've decided to join us here tonight. Thank you for taking a moment of your day to enjoy a glass with us. Wish that we could have you here with us right now, but we're doing our best to bring the Chateau our I'm joined here today by uh, with another member of our team, and she's here to help us respond to questions. So if you have any questions about the wines, how to find them, any questions, let us know, type them out, and Rashida will uh, definitely relay those to us. Now, I'm also joined here today by someone very special, someone that has opened up home to us to, to, to invite you in. Uh, in the period of the Fon Bessier, we have Howard Pock joining us. Bonjour, Howard. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for the invitation. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our, uh, to our program. Uh, my name is Howard Kwok. I'm the son of Peter Kwok. Uh, normally, I live in Hong Kong, but um, since the end of January, I've been staying in, in belfont uh because of the virus, uh, originally to wait out the virus in, in, from, in Asia, and now confined in, uh, in France, in, uh, in belfont belsier Life is not bad, though, because um, we, you know, we have a lot of open space, as you can see. Great weather. We have a swimming pool, a tennis court, uh, great wine. We're we're very lucky to be confined here. Yes, and you're no stranger to the area. You, you and your family have been members of the Saint Emilion community since 1997. So it's always good when you're here in town. And uh, we're kind of pleased that you get to have an extended stay this time. Yes, I'm very happy as well. So today I'm very happy to um to pr to present to you Chateau Belfond Belsier. Um, I will do a, a little tour around uh, to show you the environment and also our land, and also show you the inside of the uh, of the chateau. You can see behind me already. This is the uh, the backside of the uh, of the chateau. That's where Sarah is sitting. That's where I'll join her later. <laughs> and um, so why don't we go ahead? Belfond Belsier was created 200 years ago by uh, a count, Count Louis Francois de Belsier. Um, he was uh, from a prominent member of Bordeaux, and he called this Belfond Belsier in reference to all the spring around the property. Uh, we bought this property in um, in, in, two, uh, in 2017. Uh, Belfond Belsier is located on the Cote Pavi. That's the southern slopes of saint or the southern facing slope. You can see this, this slope here, it's very, very gentle slope. Um, all this you see here belongs to Belfond Belsier. All of the land of, uh, all of the, the, the parcels of Belfond Belsier is around the vineyard. Um, at the bottom, that's where we planted new vines and that's where we made, um, we made Marquis de Belfond, which we will taste today. This slope is all made of um, clay with a little bit of gravel. And it gets tremendous, uh, great amount of sunshine because it's southern facing. Uh, we also have a really special um, uh, forest here. And uh, this forest brings a diverse ecosystem. And this biodiversity cools down the, uh, the, 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 the land uh, in the evening. Because what makes us, uh, well, for us, um, this, this, so this uh, slope has a lot of great chateaus. Um, Immediately in front of us, right here, is Tetrota Buff. Immediately behind us is um, Luxy Ducasse. And on top of the hill, we also border uh, Chateau Pavi. But what makes us quite different from our neighbors is really this, uh, this, this forest. Um, when it, when, what I mean by it brings cool air, um, in the daytime, because of this, uh, the southern slopes, we have really high temperatures. But in the evening, it brings a cool wind down, which cools the, uh, the vines. This gives the vine a lot of power and a lot of concentration, but at the same time, really good structure, really good acidity. So you can see this forest really surrounds us. There's actually three pieces of forest. And in front here, you see a little bit of a terrace. You see a little bit of a terrace. 
up top also belongs to us. That's where we border Chateau Pavi. And it's on that parcel where we have some limestone. So the terroir is, um, is a mix of clay, a little bit of gravel and, uh, and limestone. I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of green parcel, green sliver there. Um, that's where we planted some truffle oak. Uh, truffle grows really well on limestone and that's what we have there. Um, but it's also very sensitive to uh, to all the chemicals that people if people use that people use in their vine in their uh, in their in their parcels. The reason why we can plant uh, truffle oaks there is because we're very disciplined in what we treat what we use in our in our vines. Uh, we use very little chemicals, and uh, we hope in a few years that uh, that it can um, that we can produce some truffles. Uh, one last part about Belfon Belsier is that the, uh, the, the, the grapes is approximately 70% Merlot, 20% Cabernet Franc, and 10% Cabernet Sauvignon. I'm going to hand you back to, uh, to Sarah, who will show you some photos of the, uh, of the property. Excellent. Thank you, Howard. That's a great view. Always something special walking out in the vineyards. So yes, we have some uh, photos that we've prepared for you. Uh, that's a very special photo. Um, this place is special for lots of reasons. It's especially special for Howard because he and his wife, June, were married here this last year. That was a photo from their, their wedding. So here we see Chateau Belfont Belsier's vineyards. And you can tell there is a division in between the different plots, the different parcels. You, you may be able to tell there's quite a difference in elevation also. These are, this is considered the southern slopes of Santa Milion, the Cote, uh, like Howard said, and the temperature, the environment is going to be different at each level in the vineyard. This is going to help us give dimension and a variety in the maturity of the grapes. When we pick them, how we decide to show them, this is a very special opportunity to really work on parcel management. Each terroir then can be identified in the blend of the final wine of, the, of Chateau Belfont Belsier. But just a gorgeous view. Here is our Shea. Our, our wine room where we bring the, the grapes in. We have begun using um, a lesser amount of new oak in the wines since our team took over in 2018. And that's because we want the support from the oak, but we don't want it to overwhelm this so well-defined terroir and the quality of the fruit we have. So the magic, the, the, the science, the art behind blending the wine from these different parcels is in finding that perfect balance of fruit, terroir, the earth, and the influence from the oak. And uh, it, we've been pretty proud of our results. We've got great base ingredients for the recipe, if you will. And Jerome McGuire, our head winemaker, has done a great job of identifying what we have in each parcel and how to piece that together to make a unique wine. So as you can see, Chateau Belfont Belsier is a true chateau. It, it, it is a wonderful place to hang out and have a glass uh, or to come and visit. Since 2017, we have been renovating, working on bringing the chateau up to standards, up to codes, so that we can invite guests to come and visit with us. Whether you want to stay an evening, weekend, a week in one of our suites, we have 14 suites that we can accommodate you and your friends, your family. We also have the possibility for events. Uh, yes, the pool is always a, a nice. We have a pool and a tennis court, plenty of places to exercise and run around in the area too, the beautiful gardens. But we also have the space available to host larger events. Um, we can in our cellar room, uh, accommodate up to 200 people. Of course, in the gardens, we have plenty of room to spread out and to make your friends and family comfortable. And we also have a seminar room for uh, your 
team building events or your, your corporate seminars or any kind of event you would like to plan. Uh, all of that, as soon as we are available to, to join again with you face-to-face, uh, -face, we would be happy to help you plan your special, your special day. And there we see a picture of Howard and June on uh, their special day this last uh, July. Uh, it was a very big day, uh, beautiful sharing of the people that were here with uh, that special moment. So now I'm going to give you back to Howard and he's going to show you this view from our, uh, our Cuvier. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, it's great to see the, uh, those photos again. Um, I am right now in the, uh, in the cellar, in the winery. I really wanted to show you this because this is something that is incredible. The structure is, uh, is original. Um, when we bought it, bought the property, we, we added insulation up top. We added this, uh, this chandelier and we, we, we reconditioned it a little bit. Uh, basically, um, this is as it is. Um, this is, this uh, winery is quite unique in that it's in a round structure. Um, it's very useful. It's very practical because when we work, we can just, um, just turn. And also with equipment, we don't need to move it at all. We just need to turn the direction. Um, this is uh, quite unique, especially from 100 years ago when this, uh, when this winery was built. Um, I also want to show you the top, the roof of the, um, of the winery. You see the steel and wood structure? Um, this is, uh, when we bought this, it's reputed to be designed by Gustave Eiffel, the, uh, the engineer who also designed the tower in Paris. Uh, he was the top steel uh, engineer in, uh, in all of France, and he had a lot of projects in the area at the time. So this is the winery. The, uh, the, the aging room is being renovated at this moment, but we'd be very happy to show you when, uh, when you come, come to visit us. Okay. Back to you, Sarah. Yeah, we've got to keep something for when you come and visit. We've got more than that to show you, uh, lots to discover, and it's been a real pleasure getting to see this new birth, this transformation of Belfond Belsier. And it's definitely stayed in how we say le pop. It's, it's definitely representing its time. Yeah, it's, it's time and place. Thanks, uh, hello. This is Rashid. Uh, yes, I just want to, to relay some information. Thank you for this great presentation. You have plenty of lots of people saying hello, hello. So, uh, Marcello, uh, Lassen is with us, June, James, Sue from London, Yannick, and on YouTube as well. Lots of people. Charlotte, say hello. And a special hello, I think, for you, Sarah, Laurie, Laurie Hall, saying hello. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> all right. Yes, thank you all for joining us today. Um, if you didn't catch the beginning or if you'd like to see this again, we're reporting it live on our YouTube channel so you can uh, catch up with us later. So now I think we should probably get to the interesting part. Right? Yes. Okay, today we're going Why? to try uh, Chateau Belfont Belsier and Marquis de Belfont 2015. Uh, 2015 is known as an exceptional year, one of the best, and that is because of a lot of different reasons, but when we talk about a good vintage, we're talking mostly about the weather patterns of that year. The growing season itself was perfect. Uh, when we say perfect, we had hot days, dry at the right times, rain at the right times, and cool evenings. Uh, that's definitely uh, uh, thanks to these three forests that you were pointing out to us earlier. So a good vintage, 2015, and we're going to try Chateau Belfond Belsier and what we call the second wine, Marquis de Belfond. Now we all know that the second wine is also a good wine, something that is made with the intention to drink it a little bit sooner, but it's not the goal to have two wines. Uh, Jérôme Guerre, our head winemaker, has let us know that our goal is to make the best wine possible. And if we can put 100% of our grapes into Belfort Belsier, that's what we're going to do. But 
We're also working on replanting. We're finding out what we have right now. So as we are learning our ingredients, we're going to put the best of the best in Belfond Belsier, and we're going to use part of that recipe in addition to some younger vines or part of the cuvee uh, or the cuve, this, the, the individual lines to make Marquis de Belfond. That will allow us to put only the best in Belfond Belsier. Chateau Belfond Belsier was classified in Santa Emilion in 2006. So we have a very high standard that we are trying to achieve. So we are always going to start with the second wine first. Mm -hmm. If you have the wine with you, please taste it with us. Absolutely. We've had our glasses here for a little bit uh, to let it breathe. But uh, if you do want to drink these wines, I would recommend letting them breathe at least an hour for Marquis de Belfont, two hours in a decanter. If you have the, the patience, uh, you'll definitely get that benefit. And if you can hold on to them, even better. Keep them in your cave for a little bit longer. So first things first, we say cheers, santé, cheers. Uh, chin, however you want to say it. Thank you for being here. The color for the 2015 Marquis de Belfont is ruby red. We've got a nice dark color. The nose is a basket full of berries and plums. What would you say? You know, it's interesting when, uh, when, I, when I smell wine, I like to smell it without swirling first. Mm -hmm. Snip it, take a sniff, and then swirl again. and. Yeah. Um, and really some more smell because I, I think you do smell a little bit different items when before you swirl it. I think for me, I smell some earth, something like um, it's it's more it's more earthy, more ground flavor smell. Uh, but once I swirl it, the fruits come out it's like red fruit, uh, 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 raspberry, a little bit of dark fruit, figs, um, black currant. Mm -hmm. I'm Very also nice. getting some good uh, tobacco notes. Yeah. And there's a little hint of truffle. Anyone that loves truffle will definitely be able to pick up on that. Mm. And then but definitely pleasing in the parking. Shall we? Marquis de Belfont, in any year, every vintage I've tried of this, is something that is pleasing. Mm -hmm. It's easy to drink. Mm -hmm. It's got a silky mouthfeel. It's got a soft texture to it, even when it's young. Yep. When we open up a wine of a good vintage, pre relatively young, this is five years old. So that's wouldn't seem like it's young, but it is in terms of quality. Yeah, for 2015, I mean, as, as Sarah said, it was a very strong vintage, um, very hot. The grapes were able to ripen really well. For this second wine, I mean, we opened it, yeah, about, about an hour ago, and it's um, this is drinking really nice now. It's a great everyday wine, but with a little bit more style, a little bit of class. Um, of course, since it's not meant to cellar, the, uh, the time uh, that we would expect from the first one, from Chateau Belfont Belsier, we're also going to have a price range that is more on an everyday basis. The 2015 Marquis de Belfont is 24 euro. Uh, a wine of this price range, uh, we wouldn't expect this kind of quality. This is way beyond what we would expect for 24 euro. And of course, if you're a club member, uh, you're able to have a little bit better price at 20% discount. That would bring your, your bottle to 20, um, at 19 euro 20 normally. Uh, I see that we have some questions. Rashida, could you, do we have a question about the, about the wine? Yes, yes, one question they're asking uh, about the aging in barrels for this wine. The, the, uh, as I mentioned, the aging in the barrels uh, is going to be necessary to soften the tannins, to impart a little bit of the wood tannin. Um, but as I mentioned, we are reducing the amount of uh, oak that we are using. We have larger um, vats, uh, 
that we call it. And uh, it's meant to give us an optimization on the fruit and the terroir and have a support, but not overwhelm. We don't want a woody wine. We want something that's going to be balanced. Uh, so for Marquis de Belfont, if I am not mistaken, we do the malolactic fermentation in the, uh, in the concrete tanks. Mm -hmm. And then we use, I believe, 30%. 30% 30 new oak, 70% um, ago. And then, I mean, for both of the wines, aging is uh, 18 months, year and a half. Um, the difference is using um, the, the proportion of new oak and, uh, and, and old oak. All right, all right. Um, we, we get that presence, we have that sensation there, but it's soft, it's, mm -hmm. it's well integrated, it's giving us uh, finesse um, that we would expect from um, an excellent wine. This is an excellent wine, but like I said, it's approachable. Uh, we have a price range that's ready for every day if you just uh, want to open up a a uh, good bottle, have a good glass at, at the end of a busy day. Uh, what's something that you enjoy to, to pair? For this, because it's, um, I mean, it's, it's on the lighter side. I wouldn't say it's light. Um, I would pair it, I would still pair it with meat, but something like poultry or pork, kind of on the lighter side. But this is, I mean, it could be something that is um, on, the, on, the, on the heartier flavor in terms of, in terms of chicken, something like cocovan can work, um, yeah. can work really well. Yeah, mushrooms. Uh, sauces uh, like that would be a, a really good pairing with this, any chicken. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Duck is kind of a favorite for me in this area. Oh. Duck will go with anything, um, but this this is a great wine to, to enjoy and not have to think about too hard. Um, we have um, a little bit more that we need to think about when we do start to open up the bottles of Belfont Belsine. Mm -hmm. The main label. Yes. The big brother, we like to say. Um. Yeah, I think immediately you smell um, a lot of vanilla and chocolate, and that's because this is 100% um, new oak. Mm -hmm. Much more concentrated in the mm -hmm. aromas, too. Mm -hmm. And the fruit. I can smell limestone, that, in, that, mm -hmm. uh, that kind of baby powder talk mm -hmm. that is uh, indicative of limestone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's what's going to tell us where this wine comes from. It's great you say that because I do have friends when, they, when, when we describe wines in terms of earthy or limestone flavors, it's always like, well, what, what, is, what does that mean? Yeah, but how do you know? <laughs> it's very cool that you smell, yeah, your fruit, of course you smell the fruit, but also these these other kind of more um, grounded, I guess, more ground, more grounded flavors, scents. Yeah, yeah, we, we all have different um, pasts, mm -hmm. different metabolisms, different palates. And it's nice to know that these wines have something for everyone, wherever it's going to hit you on your palate at whatever time frame you open it. And we can open this wine clearly for 20, 25 years if it's kept in good condition mm -hmm. in, a, in a good cellar. Um, but there's something for everyone. Uh, Marquis de Belfont uh, for 2015 is 90% Merlot, 10% Cabernet Franc. Chateau Belfont Belsier is a different percentage. We have 10% Cabernet Sauvignon, 20% Cabernet Franc, and the rest is going to be Merlot. You don't normally see Cabernet Sauvignon in, um, in, in the right bank and not in saint -Mignon. For, uh, for us, we have them here precisely because it, um, Cabernet Sauvignon is, is more late ripening and requires a warmer temperature. And, uh, and we, we, we are able to achieve that because of the, uh, of the slopes. You look at the color, this is very, very dark, very deep, especially compared, when you compare to the, uh, the marquee. Right, definitely that deep ruby robe with some purple reflex that's still there. This is, that's an indication that this wine still has a long way uh, to go. We're definitely in its youth. Shall we take a sip? Let's go. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Again, there's a lot of tannin, um, but it's not aggressive. It's not scratchy tannin. Mm -hmm. We have a, um, 
a concentration of tannin that are soft. This is a sign of the care that's put into the, the work that we do in the vineyards, that the vines are healthy, that they're taken care of, that they're not stressed out. Um, the, the inflection from the vintage itself, from the weather, but the way that we bring the grapes in, the way that they're handled, the way that they're vinified, the way that they're aged, everything is the best measures possible to make sure that the wine is pleasing. We have a, we have a question. Uh, someone asked, uh, why three different grapes? Well, um, some of those varieties were planted before. Mm -hmm. um, it gives us diversity and it's important to pay attention to the, the terroir and what is going to work best in this place and not try to decide what to plant based on what the style is or what the fashion is, but to really listen to the earth, listen to the place and decide what is going to work best in this, in this site. Yeah, and you know, the grapes are all, they all are all quite different. Cabernet Sauvignon, the skin's a little bit thicker, the taste is a little bit more like peppery notes, brings more acidity, more, more flavor. At the same time, Merlot is a lot smoother. Um, it's a, it's important to have a good mix of different fruits and you know and also be able to achieve their maximum potential uh, with the with the terroir you have. Yeah, uh, like you said, we don't get a lot of Cabernet Sauvignon uh, mm -hmm. in Saint Emilion, especially on the limestone uh, southern slopes in the clay. Um, but fortunately, we have those parcels that do accommodate it, and that's also is something that can be enjoyed by maybe somebody that prefers left bank wines. Or, oh, okay. Someone has already drank them all. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. When is the best time to, to drink the wine? Mm -hmm. um, so, in fact, the wine, I mean, 2015, as we said, is very, very powerful, very kind of muscular. You could age it for quite some time. Um, Aging wine, you need high alcohol, high uh, uh, tannins, and high acidity, and this is all three. At the same time, if you open it now, you, you let it air for a bit, it tastes, and frankly, for us, we, we, we opened it an hour ago, mm -hmm. it's already tasting quite nice. Would you recommend a, um, uh, decanting it longer? I would. I think I would. Uh, that will only help it at this young age. Uh, decanting it will give it that larger surface area to exchange with the oxygen to, to let it breathe. Um, but it really is a personal preference also. Mm -hmm. I, I know people that are okay with the bottle just open. If you enjoy it that way, you drink it that way. We're not here to tell you how to drink your wine. We just want to tell you how it's going to be at its peak. Exactly, exactly. Um, the best would be to maybe wait another few years. That way we can have the, the, the textures melt even more, become even more silky. Merlot mm -hmm. is velvety when it's young. And if you prefer that velvety texture, think about drinking it younger. If you prefer to have a silky texture that Merlot will have when it ages correctly, if it's well produced, um, then hold on to it for a little bit longer. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, do what I do. Buy at least three bottles, open one immediately, try it with a core of um, take a little out and see where it sits for you. If you think it needs a little bit more time, you have those two extra bottles to hold on to. Yeah, yeah. We have a guest who says uh, I can, he thinks he can hold uh, 15 or 20 years for sure, and perhaps even longer. I think so. I think so. 2015 is definitely a year that. Uh, we want to, to be able to enjoy in the future. It's going to give us something phenomenal in the future. It's great now, but it'll get only better. You know, I have to say, I mean, we're, 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 we're tasting the, uh, the first wine now, but Marquis de Belfond, I mean, even though it is, um, it is relatively lighter than, than the Belfond Belsia, it, it, it's definitely, it has a lot itself as well. This wine, for sure, mm -hmm. I think it can match a lot of, um, a lot of wines that are higher than the price. It, it acts almost like it's a preview to the um, to the first one. Kind of easier to access. You can drink it earlier, mm -hmm. younger, and um, and as you wait for the uh, the first one to mature. Yeah. It's a it's a good uh, method to give yourself a little bit of patience. Um, we do have several uh, older vintages of both of these wines available. Not everybody has a cave. Not everybody has patience to to hold on to their bottles. So right now in the boutique. 
We have uh, older vintages of Marquis de Belfort. We have 2011, 12. Uh, we have some 14, 16, and 17 uh, available. And tonight, as a special thank you, a, a little gift um, for joining us today, we are going to offer anybody that watched uh, our, our little seance here a 10% discount on both 2015 Marquis de Belfont and Chateau Belfont Belsier. So if you are joining us for the first time, if you visited uh, the estate or if you're just curious, we have a great price for you today. The, the normal price, the public price for Marquis Belfont, uh, de Belfont is uh, 24 euro. And as a friend, you would have for the next 48 hours, 21 euro 60 per bottle. That is a great deal on a wine that can be enjoyed now up to the next eight, 10 years. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's unheard of in that price range. So again, 48 hours and uh, we'd be happy to give you that uh, little bit of a discount. Um, for our club members, your price would be 1920 a bottle normally, which is a great price. And for joining us today, you will have an additional 10% off your club price, which would be a total of 30% off your club price for 16 euro 80. There's not a lot left there. That is a great price for a fantastic vintage that you won't be able to find in the, in the markets anymore. That's something that we, is a benefit of, of coming to us, coming through the boutique. And I have a feeling it won't last very long. Um, for, for Chateau Belfont Belsier, the 2015 public price is 55 euro, club price is 44 euro, which means that your special offer for 48 hours will be 49.50 if you're a friend and club members will have a 38.50 euro per bottle price. That's, that's incredible. Yeah. For, for a Saint-Emilion Grand Cru Classe, um, I'm probably going to be stocking up a little bit more <laughs> myself. What would you uh, what would you drink this wine with? Um, I am a big fan of lamb. I can pair lamb yeah. with just about anything. Uh, but I also have a recipe for pork tenderloin, kind of a marinated pork tenderloin with stone fruits, mm -hmm. kind of plums and peaches. That's uh, something I like to do every summer, and I think uh, that Belfont Bossier would work really well with that. Yeah, I I eat this with a grilled steak. Yeah, charcoal grilled steak. Absolutely. And for me, I mean, um, you, you mentioned the duck before, but for me, this, I think uh, this can go really well with a duck breast, grilled duck breast, which is a specialty in this area, mm -hmm. Madre de Canard, um, kind of grill, grill it on a, on a, on a charcoal grill and, um, and pair it with this wine. There's the, the tannins will really help smooth out the, uh, all the grease. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the marriage of the, what we call the cote gras, the fat, the protein in the, in the meat, uh, are going to work really well with the, the freshness, the acidity, and the tannin, and the fruit in the wine. It, it's a beautiful marriage where you can get a nice uh, magre de canna. Question, um, do we have larger bottles? We do have larger formats available. I think if, for 2015, we have a few Magnum left. Um, anyone that is interested in ordering these wines, or if you're interested in becoming a club member, send us an email to reservation at Uh We currently don't have our boutique online. We're, we're working on getting our point of sale on our website. But right now, the best way to, to acquire these wines would be to send us an email to reservation at Dot com. And then we can send you our price list. We can chat with you, find out how best uh, to get you some good wines. Um, now, we talked about the club a little bit. And in case anyone is not familiar with what that is, we offer a selection of wines. Vigneault Bliquet is actually a collection of seven different vineyards. And six of those we offer in rotation, a curated selection every year. It is 24 bottles, whether you choose to receive 12 bottles two times a year or six bottles four times a year, we can send these wines directly to your door and you would then have that 20% discount. You have access to allocated wines like Enclos Tourmaline, our premium 100% uh, Merlot Cuvée from Pomerol, and uh, you have the technical information. 
the, the winemaker notes, our pairing suggestions, uh, uh, special invitations to events. Those are, those are all benefits of being a club member in addition to having access to older vintages. Um, so if that is something that you're interested in, we'd be happy to help you out. Just uh, send us an email and we'll get you the information you're looking for. Yeah, I just want to say one more time. I mean, this, in addition to the wines we have, the, uh, the properties are also really incredible. As I said, I'm living in, in, in one of them now, yeah. in Belton Belsier. And uh, if you come to Bordeaux and you need, um, you know, you need accommodations, you're very welcome to stay in, uh, in Belton Belsier. As we said, we, were, we have 14 rooms, which is fairly rare for a, uh, for kind of a, a vineyard property. You can, you can stay in the countryside within very close distance of saint Millon. Uh, and also about half an hour drive to Bordeaux. Uh, we can do partially the um, partial property or we can privatize the entire property for weddings, events, uh, professional, professional or private, uh, do conferences. We have a conference room as well. Uh, so all this is, uh, is, is possible. We'd be happy to, to host you, to help you out. Just let us know how best we can accommodate you. So if anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to answer those. Rashida, has anybody had something? Uh, to yes, we do have a few questions. Seems that some Marcello is very interesting in this wine and he'll uh, contact us. <laughs> um, we do have a great comment from Lassen, who was actually drinking the, the, this specific wine with us, from Belsier 2015. Good. So oh, opened two hours ago, good depth color, great intense nose, dark flower, red berries, plummy light spices, bit leathery, great layers of fla flavors, oak well integrated after good breathing, palette, good attack, still elegant, good fresh berries, fruit, fine grain tannins, good lift to the palette, enhanced by minerals coming through freshness, great land, and accessible by the elegance of it. Good terroir, wine definition, bravo, good job. Elegance is key. Cheers. Excellent. Thank, Thank you, Lucen. Uh, that is a great tasting note. I wow. absolutely agree. There's just layer and layer and layer and layer on this wine. Um, it's complex. It's elegant. Uh, can't say it enough. This is a phenomenal wine, and I'm really looking forward to our future. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This wine for sure has a lot of potential. Yeah. Very proud to be part of this project and a part of this family. And I'd like to thank your family for letting us be part of that. <laughs> uh, it's something very special and we're, we're all, the entire team is proud to, to be part of this, of this shooting star project. Excellent. Well, thank you. <laughs> of course. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Um, the, the audience is quite shy today. <laughs> okay. Well, you don't have to have your question right now. You know how to contact us and don't hesitate. Uh, whatever time zone you're in, we will be happy to respond to you and um, see what we can come up with. Excellent. So I think then if we don't have any more questions, um, I would like to invite you next week, uh, May 21st, same time, eight o'clock uh, Paris time, uh, to our next tasting, which will be of uh, something very personal to you, Chateau La Patage. Yeah, Chateau La Patage in Pomerol. That is a, that is a property that, uh, um, that's under my name, um, it's, which is very cool. Uh, <laughs> when my father bought the property, he bought it for me, and, uh, and it's something that is very, uh, very special. Yeah, it's a, it's a great overall wine, and uh, we would love to share a glass with you next week. So please don't hesitate to send us an email. Let us know uh, what you thought of the tasting, what you, know, what you think of our wines, and if there's anything we can do to, to make your wine drinking experience more enjoyable. We have, a, we have uh, one question. Uh, curious to know the current stage of state vineyards, uh, vineyards if possible. Uh, state vineyards. You mean the current state of the vineyards? Um, so we bought this property in 2017, and 
um, immediately we started renovating and, and repairing the, uh, the, wi the winery and the vineyard. The vineyard was probably the first. We fixed on a lot on uh, the drainage. We fixed a lot of the vines. Um, there, were two, there were a few plots that really, I think, you know, probably was past their prime. So we replanted it. The entire property is around 14 hectares and we are now replanting over one hectare of, uh, of the land. So we're waiting for those lands to, um, to, to come online. Actually, one of them is on top of the limestone plateau uh, where I showed you where we, where we border um, uh, Pali. And that, when, once it's ready, it should be an incredible uh, piece of tepa. Yeah, great ingredients. Mm -hmm. Every parcel has their own uh, part in the blend and uh, what we get to do, what Jerome gets to do, what the winemaking team gets to do is make something that's not a forceful wine, a strong, powerful wine. It's not a, a wine that concentrates strictly on finesse. We have both mm -hmm. and it's because of this unique terroir, we can make a wine that is Chateau de Fond Yeah, we've had, a, we've had a lot of work. And as I said, we are still renovating the winery but at least the, uh, the most important parts are done. We fix it and it's, it's in working condition. In fact, even the forest, I mean, this is a huge project for us. Even the forest we've been repairing, there were actually, it, it's, a, it's a huge forest and yet there's a, quite a lot of dead trees. So we've, we've cleaned those up, we planted new trees in and we hope to rehab, rehabilitate the forest. I mean, when I do walks in the evening there, I've seen uh, wild hogs there. It's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of animals there. Um, Oh, I see another question. When will you harvest your first truffle? I mean, the, it, it's hard to say, right? I mean, these things, they, when it comes, it comes, but we, we hope they will come in, um, in, in three years. Maybe we can get our first harvest. And then uh, if all goes well, maybe after five years, we'll have, uh, we have full production. And we, can, uh, we can have truffle on site. Why not? Excellent. That's, <laughs> that's something definitely to look forward to. Um, I love truffle. Who doesn't? <laughs> Good. Uh, anyone else? Any other questions? Well, not. So well, thank you for joining us yeah. for spending a little bit of your day, no matter what time zone you're in. If it's 11 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock in the evening, thank you for spending some of your time with us today. We look forward to speaking with you again and eventually, once we're able, showing you around. From uh, Chateau Belfond Bercier in Saint Emilion. Thank you so much. Bon Cheers soir. today. Au revoir. Merci. Bye. 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 <laughs>